Now I'm going to sort of talk about several shifting power dynamics. The first I want to talk about is the future of revolutions. You know, the shifting power dynamics between citizens and, and their governments. Um, now when we think about revolutions in the future, we know the story of the Arab Spring. What we learn from the Arab Spring is that revolutions in the future are going to be easier to start and they're going to happen faster. We learn from Tunisia and a variety of the other Arab Spring countries that technology accelerates the pace of revolution. Revolutions don't begin because of technology, um, but technology certainly speeds up the process. Technology can fill the gap left by the mainstream media as citizen journalists put out more content on the public domain. Revolutions that used to begin in private are now going to unfold in public. What we learn from Egypt is that it's very difficult for the government to actually shut down the networks without consequence. In Iran in June of 2009, not enough people had a mobile device for the sort of backlash that we saw in Egypt to happen when the government shut down the internet and shut down mobile. Now, I was in Egypt during the, uh, during the revolution. I was there on the day of the revolution. Um, <coughs> and I was talking to a group of young people in Tahrir Square. And I asked them why they were there. And they said, look, I didn't like Mubarak. I wasn't sort of going to proactively protest against Mubarak. But then he made my cell phone stop working. And so I was going to protest this horrific regime that made my cell phone stop working. I talked to another young man on the street who told me, you know, what was I going to do, sit at home in front of a computer with internet that didn't work, with a phone that didn't work, in an overcrowded house with siblings that I didn't really like? I was curious. I wanted to go into the street. I heard a story on a trip to Afghanistan in June about two villages that had been attacked by the Taliban. In one village, the Taliban had confiscated the mobile devices. In another village, they had not. It was the village that they confiscated the mobile devices that the population ended up revolting against the Taliban. So you see how important this mobile device is as a commodity. And it's not because um, you know, it's sort of a fancy device. It's because in a lot of these societies, especially some of these environments where we're talking about the next five billion, um, it's one of the few outlets that these populations have. It allows them to get around restrictions on civil liberties. It allows them to access bank accounts. It allows them to have access to information that they never otherwise would have had. Um, these mobile devices are increasingly becoming a lifeblood. And by the way, for a lot of rural populations where virtual urbanization is happening way faster than physical urbanization, that mobile device is actually their connectivity to the urban environments. Um, and when they lose that, they lose understanding of market prices. Uh, they, learn under, they, they lose understanding uh, that they need for commodities trading. Um, it becomes very important. 